Thank you very much, Michael. We've got some time for some questions before we break for lunch. Um, I'd just like to make a quick observation before we start. The brief to the uh, panel was to provide us with integrated case studies, and you can certainly see they did a good job of that. Uh, but what I thought as I was looking at the case studies is uh, um, each one of them was particularly, uh, and particularly focused on two things. One is content, and the other is a very deep level of collaboration with media partners and companies providing marketing services. Um, and just a couple of quick points uh, before we get into the Q&A. Um, I read a survey uh, before I came today that 9 out of 10 B2B organizations market with content. Um, now, that source was from the Content Marketing Institute, they would say that. Uh, but I think you can see from the case studies today that it's certainly a very strong component of B2B marketing today. Um, secondly, uh, increasingly media owners or even companies like LinkedIn or networks or other companies that are providing some form of marketing uh, to B2B brands are extending those into a broad array of marketing services, even potentially starting to encroach upon those services that agencies provide. Um, taking all that into account, uh, another data point that I read was that 70% of all B2B buyers use a search engine to begin the buying process. Um, and if one takes all of that into account, the question I'd like to pose to the panel first uh, is where does this, uh, what piece of advice would you give to a B2B media owner given the change in the marketing mix, given all these data points that you've highlighted in your own case studies and I just uh, re-highlighted here, uh, in ensuring that they're really fitting with the kind of change in the way the marketing mix is moving? And uh, we'll start in the middle with James. James is uh, from Mindshare. Good question. <clears throat> um, I think, well, from an SEO stand, well, well the publishers themselves are obviously already bidding on the keyword, so it's a, it's a case of collaborating, I think, with the advertiser and the agency, because invariably they're, you know, you need to be in unity, so you need to have um, a best practice policy on how you actually share those keywords. If you're bidding on the same keywords, of course, it can raise the overall bids on, on specific terms. So I, I think, I think, at the moment, you know, SEM is obviously here um, in a very big way, and it has been for some time. I think as clients become more and more involved with SEM, then the, the, the share of natural search should invariably, that's the, the mission, of course, is to, to, build, to build away from your paid-for investments on SEM and try and build a better share in SEO. But I think from a publisher's standpoint, it's really about collaborating with the agencies and clients on, on how you actually go about... Um, tagging the content that the, the client's syndicating in your publisher environment and, and, and making sure that you're in collaboration with the, with the agency to achieve the best result. Okay, great. Stuart? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd echo exactly that. I mean, in terms of, um, I think there's a, some publishers are, are panicking in, in the amount of spend that goes towards search and, uh, you know, we've had uh, clients come to us uh, looking to put, you know, 80% of their budget into search. Uh, it plays a part. Um, but I think you know there's there's plenty of evidence to show that um, good content is what's dr driven people to, to ultimately to search. So I think it gets a disproportionate credit in terms of you know uh, uh, the, the part it plays within the, the marketing mix. Uh, and I think uh, you know publishers, uh, as James said, you know, work in collaboration with the agency and the client, um, keep producing good content. That is that is where they they become involved in that whole whole process. And I think as they search. Um, uh, it's, it's a part of the process, but I don't think it's uh, as important as, as a lot of clients and, and some publishers give it credit for. Excellent. Michael? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of um, competition between the vendors and the publishers in terms of the search, but it's ultimately down to the publishers to monetize the content that's on their site. But if I might touch on, because I think you actually raised quite a few points mm -hmm. earlier. So in terms of where kind of publishers and agencies in, in kind of encroach on each other, I mean, ultimately, everybody's in the same game to make money, the benefit that publishers have is that they have the audience and they have a, you know, a, a huge amount of content, which they're always going to be looking to monetize. Um, and if you look back, say, five years ago, there are a number of areas that the agencies would say was they were their domain. So where we were adopting kind of marketing automation, lead, lead nurturing programs, now publishers are offering those direct mm. to the vendors, where we would be developing ad formats and supplying those to the publishers. Publishers are now developing those ad formats themselves, but ultimately they're adapting to customer demand. Um, and as an agency, we're gonna have to react to that and try and stay ahead of them. Um, but also when you look at, say, things like need lead nurturing, where, where we as an agency would pitch, pitch our, our, our proposition is that 
we act as that filter between the publishers and the vendors in terms of checking and screening against the quality of the leads that are coming through. And, and some publishers are very good at in terms of the quality of the leads they pass through to vendors, whereas others are, are, are not so good. So that's kind of the value that, that I think kind of we can add in that area as well. Excellent. Um, Matt? Um, well, I think, I think taking that point, there has been a sort of evolution towards um, you know, people moving into sort of um, different remits. But equally, I think the agency model has changed for, for us as well, because when I first started doing this, it was all about media buying, and the creative agencies controlled the comms planning and everything else, and certainly that doesn't feel like it's the case anymore. It, you know, they're doing some nice pictures, and a lot of the comms planning and the really good, interesting stuff is being done by some of the better media agencies. And therefore, there's just a natural shift. Everybody's kind of moving up a step. Um, and, and that, I think, is where, certainly for me, it's, it's much more interesting because with the, with the way media is changing, comms planning is becoming much more crucial than it was when you know, ITV was the only place to, you know, to get anybody. Um, so, so I think that, that that's all kind of a positive thing. The only negative is the quality, and I think for, for publishers, um, the quality of the proposition versus the reality. So there are a lot of creative solutions teams floating around who are doing the comms planning bit and they're doing the media agency job, and a lot of them are doing a very good job, but also what we're seeing is, um, uh, as you mentioned just now, the, the, some of the quality of the data that's coming out is poor because it's not independent or it's being handled by people who aren't fully skilled up yet. So there's been a jump towards providing creative solutions and integrated planning by some of the large global media owners. You just need to be wary of the fact that if you're shifting a skill set, you need to make sure you employ and train people in that to deliver that in the same way. And, we have seen, and, and going to that sort of filtering point, we've seen a lot of data that comes out and it's not of the standard that a client would need and therefore our role changes to, to more of a sort of um, improving and polishing kind of role in that sense. Great. And Josh, uh, as the non-agency panellist, what would you suggest? I mean, our, our role is to um, help educate agencies, help educate our clients about the, you know, the value that we can deliver to, to meet a marketer's objectives. I mean, going back to the other sort of question about search, I think search absolutely plays a critical role in this, but it's one piece of a broader pie, and search doesn't enable you to build that ongoing relationship with your customer base. Um, everything that Caroline was referring to this morning, um, search, search doesn't enable you to do that today. It, it's one mechanism in a broader comm strategy. Okay, excellent. Well, we've got just a few minutes uh, to go before lunch, actually. Uh, so maybe if we take one or two questions from the uh, from the audience, um, Joel. Thank you. Hello, Joel Harrison from B2B Marketing. Uh, Joshua made the point about emotion becoming increasingly important in B2B decision making. Uh, that's a discussion itself. I suspect that you could say that's always been there. But um, I mean, as, an, as a business, we're finding there's a, a slight shift. The last few years has been about demand generation very much, one which I know Michael's very heavily involved with. But we're seeing uh, there's a few more discussions coming on about brand development work. And obviously, branding is about emotion. How is, I'd like to know what the panel think about the kind of balance between um, the emphasis being on lead-orientated activity or brand-orientated activity, and whether that's shifting at the moment. If one or two of you jump on that, I thanks. Think, um, I think for us, you know, as you said, the, the trend over the last few years has been all about performance, all about lead generation, and, and you know, huge swathes of budget have been pushed that way. Um, what we've seen is you know, where, where, you, where you've got really highly defined lead programs, so bank lead programs, for example, um, very expensive lead programs, but deliver really good quality leads. We've seen issues with conversion because so much money has shifted towards pure generation rather than awareness. So, that, so they're getting you know, highly defined leads um, that are not converting because no one's heard of their brand, no one's comfortable with it, no one's got any kind of emotional attachment to it. Um, so the lead quality's high, and yet they come back to us, these aren't converting. We go back to the media owners, and both of us have hit the criteria, you know, nailed it, but they're not converting. And that, I think, is, uh, we've now started to see the shift the other way, and good spend's now coming back towards awareness for that very reason. Yeah, I mean, I'll certainly echo that point. So the example I showed earlier with CA, one of the things that they came to us last year <laughs> with was the fact that they had um, been investing most of their money into demand generation at the sake of uh, brand awareness. And, and brand awareness is a bit like kind of an atomic half-life. You can, you can go maybe a quarter or two quarters and take your eye off that um, and focus on demand and it won't affect you too much. But over time, it will have, it will have that um, worsening effect and that people then would just won't have that brand, 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 brand affinity. I think the key role that we have as agencies is to work with publishers because I don't think it's either do brand and awareness or do demand generation. I think if you look at, say, the example that the guys have been showing earlier, you can get that balance of ensuring that the content 
positions the company in exactly the right way, but you can then follow it up with the demand gen activity. So I don't see that kind of division, and you kind of hear the phrase brand gen band being bandied around, but that's kind of, that's kind of think where we need to be heading with publishers. Okay, one more question. Um, <coughs> I've got a question for Joshua. I'd like a bit more clarity over your uh, position with us as publishers. You know, you talk to, I can understand how we as publishers could use LinkedIn groups to, to uh, as elements of the campaigns we do with clients. And, you know, and I don't mind creating engagement on your site as part of that overall package. But I feel pretty uncomfortable if you then turn around to HP Direct and say, look at all the fantastic engagement going on on LinkedIn. We can do some fantastic campaigns direct for you using some of these people that we've brought to you. I, I begin to feel really uncomfortable about that stuff. So the question is, you know, friend or foe, how are you positioned with us as publishers? Um, with that about friends, so when, when I think about sort of the way that we interact with publishers today, on one hand, we have relationships with you know, agencies, directly with marketers as well, and we deliver them solutions on our platform as other media owners do. Um, in terms of our interaction with publishers, when I look at products like LinkedIn Today, for example, which bring in sort of um, relevant content from across the web or snippets of relevant content across the web, which in turn then drive traffic to your, to your sites for people to read the sort of the, the, the full length content, I think there's an ability for us to partner on that front. You know, when I look at the share button, we've seen sort of huge increases in traffic on people's sites as a result of the share button or LinkedIn Today. So I think it's a, you know, on one hand, um, yes, we're both speaking to agencies, we're both speaking to clients, and yes, we're both going after a specific marketing budget, but on the other hand, there's an ability for us to work in conjunction with one another where we can actually drive traffic to your respective sites. Okay, um, hopefully there'll be time for questions over lunch. I'm gonna pose one last question to the panel with a one-word answer, if I may, please. Uh, in an imaginary world where you were all given a, uh, a, a, won the lottery and had a certain amount of money that you could spend on anything as long as it was in media or marketing focused on B2B. Uh, <clears throat> of the wide array that you could invest in, search, display, network, exchanges, content marketing, social, mobile, what would you invest in? Obviously setting aside the businesses that you currently run. Uh, but um, I'll put the hard question to Stuart to start, and if each of you would give a one-word answer, that'll bring us to lunch. Content marketing. Content. It's all about content. So. Okay. Josh? S social. James? Um, Real-time bidding at exchange. Okay. Yeah, sorry, two words. No, <laughs> it's social. Um, I'll say content across social mobile. <laughs> <laughs>